vessel mapping the seabed and looking at what lies below, at the bottom of our seas, off our shores. The seabed and what may lie beneath is not, however, the only undiscovered area under Irish water. Further inland, there are lakes and rivers which, although easier to dive and explore, have yet to yield up their secrets. Our lakes and rivers are not exactly the kind of places where you would expect to find items of archaeological interest. However, the silt at the bottom of our waterways can cover and protect items for centuries. A search of the lake bed at Loch Carob in County Galway has revealed one of the greatest archaeological finds in Ireland in recent years. And our reporter Niall Martin joined the search team to find out what lies within those hidden depths. For the last two summers, the Underwater Archaeology Unit of the Department of Heritage have been diving in Loch Corrib. What they've discovered is sensational. Over a dozen boats ranging in age from the 11th century all the way back to four and a half thousand years ago, the warships of their time. This is a very exciting find. Um, it's a very unusual find. Um, we, 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 haven't, we haven't had anything quite like this that I can remember uh, since, since joining the museum. The archaeologists wouldn't be here were it not for Trevor Northwich, a ship's captain who spends most of his year moving tankers across the oceans. When he's home in Galway, he likes nothing better than going out on his boat with an expensive piece of kit called a side-scanning sonar. It, it's incredible. I had no idea what it was going to be like. I thought I was just going to be out traipsing up and down the lake in straight lines, recording bathymetry, recording the soundings. But uh, as soon as these wrecks started turning up and I started working with the underwater archaeology unit, it's just, it's a new world. It's, it's exciting. Side scan sonar can picture items on the lake bed and can even see through the top layer of silt. For archaeologists, it means they know something is there before they even have to get their feet wet. The work Trevor Norchard has been doing on the lake has been fantastic. It really makes our job a lot easier. He's been going out, surveying the lake, finding all the sites and enables us just to go straight into a site uh, with detailed locations and it prevents us having to go searching for these sites ourselves. So his work is really of great benefit to, uh, to ourselves and to the local community here in Loch Carb. It's really clear, we're pick picking up every rock, we can pick up fish on this, we can pick up the divers on it, we can see their fins, their bubbles, you know, we, so we know exactly what they're up to down there, you know, there's no sacking off the job on this one. <laughs> This is the oldest boat the team have found, named the Anakin boat. It's four and a half thousand years old and is in a fabulous state of preservation. Once you put your head in the water, you go down to the bottom. It can be dark and murky, but once you hit the log boat, it kind of, a new world opens up to us and we kind of, um, you actually go into a different world while you're down there. So let's go back 4,500 years. All around here was an oak forest, an oak jungle. You look at the Anakin boat, 40 foot long, one straight length of timber. Yeah, for oak trees to grow like that, they must have been growing close together, struggling for the light. Yeah. This was a dangerous place. Yeah. The easiest way to move from A to B here was on the lake. That boat, the people who built it were working at the forefront of their technology for the day. That was a battleship of its day. It was right here, these people were here, and they left us this boat. Local fishermen have been inquisitive about what's been happening out here, but the underwater team have had to keep quiet about it until all the artefacts are taken off the boats. I know just from talking to the people locally that they are very interested in this because very little is known about what lies beneath the, the waters of, of Loch Carb. So it's, it's, these sites kind of tell us a lot about what the local community were doing here on the lake and around the lake, you know, 5,000 years ago. Today, the dive team are preparing to survey one of the 12 log boats they found. To everybody around the lake, this has been a two-dimensional piece of water. 
And now that we've found things like the Anakin boat up here, 4,500 years old, people are starting to realize there's a lot more to this lake than meets the eye. It's not just a flat sheet of water with a few fish in it. You know, this has been a really important part of Irish heritage. The underwater archaeology team have found boats covering a time span of 5,000 years. If even just one boat sank here every year over that period, there must be a hell of a lot of wrecks lying at the bottom. Today we've come out with Finbar Moore, senior archaeologist at the National Monument Service. He's here to see what his team get up to when they're not in the office. Corrib was a very large expanse of water and strategically important because control of the waterways controlled um, trade and activity in the area. We know that the Vikings were coming up here from Limerick in 927. They raid the islands on Loch Corrib and um, they plunder them and they take, they plunder the lake as it says in the annals. In 928, they're defeated by the Connacht men on Loch Corrib. In 929, they come again and they raid the islands on Loch Corrib. Later in 929, they come again and they're defeated by the Irish on Loch Corrib. And part of the story of the Vikings in Ireland is that they never conquer Ireland the way they did conquer large tracts of Britain. The reason being that they found it very tough to go to war here. So there were hard men over here in the West who were fighting the Vikings and they adapted very quickly to the Viking methods. Under the Corrib, this is what the dive archaeologists are seeing. An 18-foot long boat dating from the 11th century, the Viking era. It's a high-status boat that was probably carrying a high-status stone on it. There's four seats and one person who would have been at the back directing the boat and maybe been transported. So the boat could have been used to carry around a dignitary who is bringing a gift of this unusual stone to one of the monastic islands around, around the lake. And from the detailed recordings taken by the dive team, we know how the vessel came to be at the bottom of the lake. Well, we know why the boat sank. Um, it developed a large crack uh, along the base of the boat on, on the port side. And there's a couple of scenarios of why it might have sank. There is a rock very close by here, which it could have hit, you know, and that may have caused a crack. Alternatively, it just could have been a bad stormy day. The wind picked up and just overturned the boat, you know. As another, I suppose, alternative is that uh, the large stone that was on it may have um, dislodged on their voyage and caused a crack because it is such a finely carved boat. The walls on it are, are very thin and we can see, can see why, how a crack would form very easily. They obviously left all their goods on board the, the boat, so we would hope that because we're only 400 yards from shore that they would have been able to swim ashore safely. Um, but I suppose that story we, we will never find out. Everyone on the surface. What are you seeing down there? I, I, I tell you, what I'm seeing is, is um, just incredible because it's a single piece of timber and hewn out of it is this wonderful feature that we would call a log boat, but that's a misnomer because it's, it's actually more than a log boat. There's seats, foot rests, oar locks in it. What you'd expect to see nearly on a modern boat, and yet this is quite an ancient craft, so it's... it's we would have seen log boats before, but this is... I think it's wrong to call it a log boat. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a vessel. You this know. is like the Rolls Royce of log boats. That's a good description. <laughs> yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any archaeology is a privilege to work at. Getting to dive on something like this is spectacular. Back on land, the keeper of antiquities at the National Museum has come along to see what Carl and his team have brought to the surface. We found what well, turns out to be the vortex from the site, yeah. and um, it's it's very delicate, so I won't take it out. Yeah. But it um, it's a beautiful, beautiful little axe here, and um, not sure what you think whether it's a battle axe or a work axe or maybe a throwing axe. Or well, something. the other axes uh, from that boat are clearly weapons, yes. and these and these darts, these small spears, are also weapons. So we're almost certainly looking at a boat containing soldiers yeah. and uh, we know there are a number of military garrisons in this lake yes. at around that period. There's certainly more to be found out there. Um, I think the, the, the work that, that 
the underwater unit have been doing over the years has been really exceptional and, and has been you know, making a, a fantastic contribution and uh, it's something I see developing and growing in the future. On this boat, the team found an oar and a spear aboard. But they were puzzled about what this was. It looked like something had been jammed in underneath the seat. As you um, piece together your results and research together underwater and then bring it on land, you know, you, you might make your, 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 your most important and exciting find back in the office when you start researching these sites and so all of a sudden the, the jigsaw pieces fit together and you get the results you were looking for or a new a, a result that you weren't expecting. This is the, uh, yeah, that fits in nicely there. That's it there, an early Iron Age axe, so it fits mm. together nicely. Mm. And, uh, a beautiful object. We weren't quite sure what it was when we were diving it because it was kind of inserted in under, underneath a seat in the boat. We, we felt maybe this is an axe or maybe it's another implement or maybe it's another tool or maybe it's a part of a boat that we haven't seen before. But we soon realised once we got back here to the conservation lab that it was an axe and an axe of an early type, kind of rarely seen in Ireland, uh, dating probably to about 600 BC. Our current thinking at the moment is that they inserted this axe into the boat um, as part of a, a ritual when they sank the boat. Is it possible as well that it could be just jammed there for safe for safekeeping so that, you know, on a stormy day, things aren't flying all around the boat? No, um, they thought about this very carefully. They measured the axe and they measured the position of the seat in the boat and they carved a little semicircular notch in the axe handle so it would fit perfectly in, on, in underneath the seat. The axe has been inserted in under this um, seat almost become part of the boat itself. Um, and we can see down here is um, the iron axe head. It's a, it's a socketed and looped. And maybe it was the kind of the chief canoe maker kind of at this time. And um, in honor of him, kind of when he died, maybe they decided to uh, sink a boat he'd made and use one of his axes to help in that sink sinking process. It really is a unique um, find in Ireland. There's no other kind of axe like this, as far as we know from Ireland. So. Uh, was certainly preserved to, to this level um, and um, it's really kind of fantastic to be able to, to find this and, and bring it to museums so it can be conserved and hopefully put on display sometime. The discoveries that have come from the depths of Loch Corrib are stunningly well preserved. The hope is that they'll go on display not just in the National Museum but in exhibitions around County Galway where local people can take pride in their ancestors' craftsmanship. I would love to see something local happen with all of this stuff that's being found on the lake. I would love to see it. it. It needs to stay in the area. OK, the country needs to benefit from it. It needs to be made available to everybody. But I would love to see the important stuff stay here. And while discussions continue about how that might be achieved, for the moment, some of the treasures from Loch Corrib have already been put on display at the National Museum in Kildare Street. Cleaned up, you can see the workmanship in these implements of war from deep within our history. Exhibits such as these are here thanks to the work of staff from the Department of Heritage and the National Museum. And it's not very often that archaeologists get to see their items on display at the National Museum almost as soon as they're uncovered. So congratulations to Carl Brady and his team at the Department of the Environment. After the break, we take to the seas to discover what lies on the seabed off the Irish coastline. We'll see you in a few minutes. Mm -hmm.